that happened about one week ago, and it's still like releasing. I don't know how to describe it, but I have a feeling like I have a nerve pain from underneath my rib, and it's going out up to the neck like that. And it's painful, especially after I eat. Like I can't lie down. It's painful to breathe. It's painful to, to laugh. Yeah. And if you do breathing uh, meditation, can you feel? Yes. Yeah. It's like it feels very inside. It's like here and then comes up to the neck, like here. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any movement that created also or only deep in the Especially when I lie down and especially on the left side. So if you now lie down on the left side, you feel it? Thank you. No. You felt it, right? Yeah, you <laughs> now wait, wait, wait. Now I'm going to do this one. No, now do it. How is it feel now? Oh my god, it's gone! <laughs> yes, what? it's gone. It's gone? Yeah, when I exhale, it's gone. Oh, but it's painful when you press so much. Oh. Good. 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 Inhale? A little bit, I feel it still. A little bit, yeah? I found it. Oh, oh, now you release and it's like came back. Yeah, no. Oh. Come back. What happened? C1 was stuck. What I did. When Kira was lying, when Kira was lying, I just press C1, the, the mass, the lateral mass of C1, I press inward, put the atlas in the right place, and then the pain disappeared. And what the test was, what I did, I asked her to show me the pain. I asked Kira to show me where she had pain. And when she had pain, the dura in the occiput got contracted. And then when I press C1, the dura in the occiput got released. And this is what gives me the idea that C1 maybe is the problem. So what I did, I just push C1 to the right place and you see the pain change. So now what I'm going to do is to check if C1 is the root cause or something else created the dysfunction in C1. And if I get the idea that C1 is the root cause, I will put C1 in the right place, and then I will ask Kira to lie on her left side. Let's see what happens. So, let's see. Now I'm checking the bone of the skull in five different lanes. And you see the bone the occiput is stuck on the bone level. And when I'm touching the C1, the bone becomes soft. So I know that the problem is in C1. So now I'm going to put C1 in the right place. And what will happen? Uh, this complaint uh, will, will change. And usually when C1 is going to the left, C2 is going to the right. Mm -hmm. So here, you see this is C2? Here, see that? Yes, thanks. Here. And C2, there is a muscle called the vatral scapula that attached to C2. It's here. Oh. <laughs> this is the levator scapula that attached from C2. When I'm going to release C1, because C1 moved to the left, C2 moved to the right. When C2 moved to the right, the origin and the insertion of the levator scapula got shorter. And this is why it's painful here. So when I will put C1 to the right place, C2 also will come to the to neutral position, and the levator scapula will get released. And her pain here will get also released. So, now I'll show you how we're going to do this. Now, I want you to look at your eyes to the right. Strong. Take your tongue to the left. Now, we had a movement in the hand and the leg. Yes. Inhale and hold the breath as much as comfortable. Do it a few times. Now I'm going to check the skull again. I'm going to see the tension in the oxygen. Because it was stuck in the bone level, the bone felt very dense. So I'm going to check the bone again. It got released. So now I'm going to check C2. Now I'm 
going to deliver to Scapula. Mm -hmm. <laughs> on your side. On, right on your left side. Oh, that's left. Way left. Way left. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's the CC1 was very crucial in her dysfunction. Now, this is what the first layer. I will continue. I want you to inhale. Exhale. Good. Now, what I did now, I just checked the diaphragm. What happened when a person inhaling is the diaphragm going down. When it's going down, the temporal bone are opening. And the, le the right side is open, but the left side didn't open. It's just like two things, like it's a diaphragm, is pulling like this, the skull, and then the, the temporal is opening. This didn't open. So let's see why. Lay down on your side, but now I'm going to press here. Okay? Thank you. Please, on your side. Oh wow. Yeah, I don't feel anything. Don't but it feels painful when you press it. You don't feel anything. You feel the diaphragm is stuck. It didn't went down because the pericard is holding it. You see, there is a ligament. In the, from the heart to the diaphragm. And this ligament prevents from the diaphragm to go down. And when I inhibit the ligament, now the diaphragm can move. Okay. She doesn't have any pain. And remember what I told you about the ligament of the heart. You get stuck because of emotional dysfunction, right? No. No, I need to find a psychotherapist. <laughs> How to find out why is the emotional thing? And you see that if I'm pressing here in the sternum, it's sensitive, right? Yes, it's painful. It's painful. Because the ligament is pulling from down. So what I'm going to do now, I can work on the pericard. <coughs> but I want to go deeper. I told you that dysfunction in the pericard is come from emotional imbalances. But I also told you that dysfunction inside the brain level is also originate because of emotional imbalances, right? I will balance the level of the brain, the fifth there. I will see in which area of the brain there is dysfunction. I'm going to release it. If I will succeed, I want to see the tension in the sternum is going to release. And then the diaphragm, I will do the test with the diaphragm, will get released. And then Kira <coughs> is going to lay down on her side, and the pain also will to release. This will give me the indication that I really change the brain, that I work on the source. So? Mm Wonderful. Now, what happened to Kira? The limbic system got stuck, and the part of the frontal lobe close to the eye, close to the, to the um, eyebrow, is the area that is part of the limbic system. And if you know, the limbic system is located in the inside of the temporal lobe. And when the temporal lobe is stuck, also, the temporal bone is stuck, right? Remember, all the layers affect each other, yes? So when the temporal bone is stuck, the muscle that is here is also stuck. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it? Yes, it's stuck. And also, when the temporal bone, the, the temporalis is stuck, the temporalis muscle is attaching to the masseter. Mm -hmm. You feel it? Oh. And you see, this temporalis muscle is stuck because of the limbic system that is located deep in the temporal lobe. And this dysfunction 
come from this part of the limbic system. So I'm going to work the limbic system here, and this will get you this. And another thing will happen. Remember that I told you that the whole of the temporal bone is going to be dysfunctional. So all the muscles that attach to the temporal are going to get dysfunctional. Okay? And now what I did, I just diagnosed the tension inside the mastoid process, and I saw which part in the mastoid process is more dense, and the area is the posterior part of the mastoid process, here. And here you have a muscle that calls planus capitis. This one. Oh. That is stuck. Because when I'm touching here, it's much more dense, the insertion of the muscle is more dense than the other part of the mastoid process. So all this will get released after I'm going to treat the limbic system in the frontal lobe. Okay, that's right. <laughs> Easy. Yes. <laughs> In the ICS method, practitioners diagnose and treat five layers. Muscles, bones, dura mater, cerebral fluids, and the brain. All this is done with super gentle touch, accessing the relevant tissue with precision, after diagnosing the source of the patient's problem. Oren Doten is now treating the orbitofrontal cortex in the patient's brain. He applies the exact amount of pressure needed to treat the orbitofrontal cortex in order to influence her limbic system. This gentle touch is achieved after years of developing sensitivity through practice. Not all treatments include working on brain tissues. The therapeutic strategy depends on the diagnosis. Okay. I'm happy. Okay. Let's see what happens. So first I'm touching the temporal, and the temporal becomes soft. So I want to show what happened to the temporalis muscle. Can you look? This sounds like massage. And now, <laughs> the masseter. Mm -hmm. Now, the splenus capitis, that is behind the sternocleidomastoid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the ligament of the pericard. Now, breathe in. Now, I check the movement. Again, breathe in and hold the breath. Hold the breath? Yes. <coughs> You see what happens here? <laughs> <laughs> you see, we, you see, it's a, it's an unusual complaint. Okay, see, one was stuck because when I diagnosed while, while she was lying down, the occiput was dysfunctional in the bone level. So I said, okay, I will go, if it's a bone level, I'll go to a joint, the joint of the occiput. See what? So I inhibit C1, and you see that she had a change in her complaint. So I did another test to see that it's, it's C1 is the cause and not the symptom. I release C1, and you see C2, and the muscles that attach to C2 got released. And then I did another diagnosis. <coughs> I got to the, to the pericard. And when I touched the ligament of the pericard, it got better. So I know it's emotional. So if I know it's emotional, I said, okay, I will go, I know that the emotional dysfunction is manifesting in the fixation of the brain. So I diagnose uh, uh, some parts of the brain and I found the limbic system to be stuck. There you over here. And this area in the frontal lobe release the hippocampus and the amygdala that are located in the medial aspect inside the temporal lobe. And when, you remember, one layer will affect all the other layers. This is why the muscle was contracted and the bone was dysfunctional. And you see that the temporalis and the masseter was contracted. And also the muscle here that attach 
to the mastery process, named splenic capitis. And when I release this, all the muscle of the temporal got released. I did the test again to see how, when she's breathing, the diaphragm go down. The, the temporal need to expand. It's, it's happened. And then she lay down. No more pain. And this is how we think and treat an ICS. Thank you. My neck feels amazing, by the way, like super good. Okay. Yeah. Neck in general. Like. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. ICS Training Center runs courses worldwide. We teach in the US, in Norway, in Turkey, in Israel, in Thailand, and more. If you want to check if we are coming to your area, contact us.